everyone, Chris here, the RC Geek, coming to you from the shop, and this is my assembly and flight review for the E-Flight 90mm Viper Jet. Uh, this is a really great flying airplane. It's a good size. You've got a 55-inch wingspan here, uh, and you've got the 90mm EDF in there. Uh, and, you know, the performance, the looks, it really is the whole package. You know, the performance is fantastic, and it tracks extremely true uh, in flight. Now, in true E-Flight fashion, uh, the assembly is extremely quick, uh, and that starts with the horizontal tail that just drops into place. And you've got four studs in there uh, to receive screws. And so you drop the tail in. There's two screws that hold that horizontal tail. Uh, and then when you drop the, the vertical tail into place, uh, there's two screws at the back and then one forward uh, in that leading edge extension there. Uh, and that holds the dorsal in place. Now from there the wings slide in over two carbon spars and they're held in place with two screws each. Uh, to finish it up you just clip the ventral fins into place and that's it. Uh, and so on the bench you know the airplane really looks good. It's got a similar paint scheme to the 70 millimeter except the red accents versus the blue. The red does look good and it shows up really well uh, in the air. Now, I do wish that the white areas were painted white versus the bare foam, but that being said, it still looks good, and it's got a really nice smooth finish to it. Now, in terms of the features, you've got the full shock absorbing landing gear. Those work extremely well. You've got a nice big canopy hatch, a really large battery area, uh, and so, you know, you can fly a, a myriad of sizes of packs. Uh, and then the other thing is you've got the slotted flaps here, they've got an external hinge and then so when they deploy downwards you've got a nice flow through slot. The slow flight on the airplane is quite excellent. So the model features safe if that's something you're looking for. You've also got the full smart telemetry uh, but with that comes the option for reverse thrust. So if you're wanting to set that up uh, what you do is when you've got the airplane all programmed you scroll through the telemetry windows all the way to the right. Okay, that will take you to the ESC setup window and you just follow the instructions. So you hold up elevator and left aileron for five seconds and up elevator, right aileron for five seconds. You just follow the instructions on the screen uh, and then that will enter into the menu. Now you have to use your elevator stick to scroll through the menu uh, and essentially you just want to set up your reverse thrust, you want to assign that to a channel. So in my case, I assigned it to channel 8. So when you go all the way down, you hit exit with save. You have to ensure that that channel, whatever channel you assigned it to, is assigned in the channel assign menu. And then in the, the digital switch setup, you set up a digital switch on that switch you've assigned. In my case, I signed it to switch D. The other thing is when you set that up, with reverse thrust off, it's set to minus 100%, and then with reverse thrust on, it's set to 100%. And you may have to experiment that with that a little bit, but uh, that's really all you have to do. It's a fun feature to play with for sure, and it really shortens up the landings. So with that said, you know, in terms of the controls for the elevator, 12 millimeters up and down with 12% expo. For the ailerons, 12 millimeters up and down with 5% expo. For the rudder, 22 millimeters left to right with 25% expo, uh, and that helps desensitize the steering mostly. Uh, and then for the flaps, I'm at 25 millimeters at the mid flap setting and 45 millimeters at the full flap setting. And there's no elevator mix required, which is really nice. For the batteries, I'm using the Smart 6S 7000 pack, really gives excellent flight times, and that's pushed about one and a half or so inches forward of the receiver mount that's in the, the hatch area. That CG equates to approximately 115 millimeters as measured from the wing root leading edge aft. And so when you look at the wing, there's the plastic mount piece there at the root leading edge and it's essentially just 15 millimeters back from that and it's just forward of the front wheel well on 
the bottom of the airplane. So that's kind of your reference point for you. You know, flying the airplane, this is an extremely good flying jet. Uh, it's like the 70 millimeter, but bigger. Uh, and so it flies bigger, it flies faster, and in fact, it lands much nicer too. Uh, it's just generally a bit more responsive and it slows down better. Otherwise, you know, it knife edges all day long, nice axial rolls, uh, point rolls, any of that. And actually, it'll do a pretty, pretty violent snap roll too, uh, which is pretty fun. And, and so the other thing is the slow flight of the model is extremely nice. So you put the flaps down and you can just go you know, slow flight, figure eights, whatever you want to do, uh, and it's happy to do it. Uh, the other thing is with the nice wide gear stance, uh, it takes off extremely easily, uh, tracks really true, uh, and then on the landings, the only thing you do have to be careful of is getting it a touch too slow on the landings in the flare. Uh, I found that it'll approach just beautifully. Uh, but if I pull the power back too soon and then flare it a bit too hard, uh, it'll drop a wing on me. So I've scraped a couple wing tips uh, in the process. Uh, so the key is to kind of keep that touch of power all the way down through the flare, uh, and it'll really give you a nice touchdown. And so in terms of my timer, I have my timer set at four minutes, which is kind of my by warning, but I'm usually flying five plus minutes with the model. All right, so with that said, let's take this out to the field. We'll give you guys a flight, uh, and then we'll come back, and we'll wrap this up.
right, there we have the E-Flight Viper Jet 90 millimeter. Uh, this is a really nice flying airplane. I can't say enough good things about how well this airplane flies. Uh, it's tracks extremely true. It's aerobatic, nice and axial in the aerobatics as well. The airplane has very similar characteristics to the 70 millimeter. So if you're proficient with the 70 and looking for something bigger, uh, I think you would probably do okay with this model. Just do bear in mind it's bigger, it's heavier. And so the airplane is going to feel bigger and it's going to take up more airspace as a result. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to follow along on social media at the RC Geek. Subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you at the field. It's Viper time. <laughs> it's, a, it's an homage to a previous video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jeez. <laughs>